Hey, what's up? Today we're just taking a quick look at the Atom Cube RX7 from Pilot Cine, and specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the mobile app and uh, what is offered in that app together with the RX7. We are also going to take a look at how to use the RX7 or the RX50 that I have next to it, or a combination of them uh, together in a Bluetooth mesh, so you can control a group of these lights without having to use that mobile app. First off, if you haven't seen my review for the RX50, I recommend you check it out. The operating system, the functionality, and everything built into the RX7 is very, very similar, if not pretty much identical to the RX50, so that'll give you an idea for how to operate this and just a kind of better look at the details of what's included. Basically, the RX7 is just a little bit larger than their original RX1, as you can see here, but it is quite a bit more powerful. It's one of the most powerful of this size on the market, uh, and it has quite a lot of functionality built into it as well. Of course, it has great quality light output as well. I'll put up some quick tests on screen just to give you an idea of the brightness and uh, things like those color metrics. Uh, but we're going to jump right in and see how to connect the app. First of all, in the menu, make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on, and if you're having trouble connecting it, then just go down a little bit in that same menu to reset the Bluetooth, and you should be good to go. The app is called Cuber Sync, and we'll just open that up. Now in here, you can see I have an RX7 already listed, but I did go ahead and reset that Bluetooth, so we're going to delete this, and then we'll go and connect uh, from the start again. If you want to add a new light to here for the first time, click the plus in the top right corner, add device, and you can see here it detects the RX7. Just click the little plus there, and it's going to connect no problem. Go back, and now you can see that it is listed in there. You also want to make sure that your firmware is up to date, so just long hold on either of these lights, click about device, and you can check for firmware updates. If you do go ahead with this firmware update, be aware that it does take a while. It's taken me up to around 10 minutes uh, each time that I've done it. Of course, you can rename these by clicking here and just typing in a name. And if you have a bunch uh, in here and you want to find one in particular, you can uh, use the search function at the top. I only have two, so I don't need that. You can power it on and off from here, as you can see happening right there. If you want to create a group, you can go over to the group tab, uh, and I've got a couple groups in here right now. They all have zero devices, but you could again click the plus at the top, create a group, uh, give it a name, and then you could choose which lights you want to add. You can go back to the added page, and you can see the lights that have already been added into that group. The not added is, of course, the list of lights that have not yet been added to that group. The final page here, setting, just gives you some options for uh, language, for example, so you can follow the system. Uh, for me, that's English, or you can change it over to Chinese, for example. But we're going to go back to the device page for it now and jump into the RX-7 just by tapping it. The first page here down the bottom is your color page, and there are a number of, I guess you could say, sub pages up at the top. Right now we're on HSI, so the H for hue. It's controlled with this wheel right here. Let me turn up the intensity so that way you can actually see the effect. Then as you go around the wheel, you can see uh, the color is changing right together with that. And it's very responsive. It's very quick. You could also tap the number up here and then go in manually. For example, I wanted uh, 300. Tap that and it jumps right over to that setting. You've also got some presets for red, orange, yellow, green, uh, blue, blue. I know there's more technical terms for that, but I don't know them. And purple. Down the bottom, you have a slider for dimming. You can also click the plus or the minus to get little small adjustments, or once again, tap the number to go in there and manually set it. Next up at the top, we have hue and saturation, and this is just a different way to control your color. You've got the circle where you can not only drag around the outside now, but you can also drag towards the center uh, to control the saturation of that color. And then, of course, down the bottom, you can control your intensity. Once again, those numbers displayed for hue and for saturation, you can tap to enter manually. And the intensity down the bottom, you can tap the plus or the minus to get small adjustments. CCT is your correlated color temperature mode, white light mode, if you will. And this will take you from your 2500K up to 6500K with those presets. Or you could scroll around the wheel over here, and you can see the actual number uh, right down below that. Once again, tap it to enter it manually if you want. Then again, down the bottom, you have control for your dimming, which works the same as we've seen so far, as well as your green magenta shift adjustment, which again works in the same way as that dimming slider. Next up, we've got RGBDT, so daylight and tungsten, also included in this RGB tab. And that's just to go in and dial exactly how much uh, red, green, and blue you want to uh, mix. 
For me, I've always found the HSI type control a little bit uh, easier, more intuitive, but if you want to go in and dial in some specific values through this page, you can do that as well. And of course, you've got your intensity slider down the bottom, and you can go ahead and tap all of these values to enter them manually if you want. You can see the preview color up top, and if you want to add in a preset, you can just long hold one of the circles at the bottom, and then you can jump between a couple of presets that you set into here. Next up, we've got our picker page, and so we're just gonna go ahead with our camera here, and let's pick a color, and then you can see that color as well as the actual information, the hue and the saturation displayed on screen right there. Down below, you can also, of course, tweak things like the intensity, the saturation, for example, from that base that you started out with. You can also have this function in HSI mode to give you color results or in CCT mode if you wanted to uh, recreate some actual white light source. Now, next up, we've got CIE 1931. So this is going to be another way of controlling your color. So if you've got information that you want to reproduce that you know these coordinates, for example, you can see the X and the Y down the bottom. You can go ahead and recreate it this way. Although the appearance of the numbers for X and Y are different from, for example, the 100% in the intensity tab, uh, you can go ahead and tap those numbers and type in manually your X and Y coordinates as well. And then you can control the intensity. You can program in some presets down the bottom by long holding those circles. You can override one of these, of course, just by long holding it. So if you want to reset something, just long hold over that and it will reset it to whatever value you currently have dialed in. And next up, we've got gel mode. And so we have tons of uh, gels in here with the names and the numbers and everything uh, displayed right there for you. If you know what you're looking for, you can search right there up at the top. You can also choose down at the bottom if this theoretical gel will be applied to a 3200K light source or a 5600K light source, because of course, it's gonna be different depending on which type of light you're putting the gel over. So you can control that as well. Now the next page is pretty cool, but it's definitely overwhelming and that's the custom FX page. In this page, you can build and customize nine custom special effects, and you can store five of those in the slots below, which will be kind of written to the light so you can access them from the light itself without having to use the app or anything like that. But you can store nine in the app itself, and creating one is quite a complex process. There's a lot of different types of uh, effects that you can build into a step-by-step -step special effects pattern. So I will actually make a second video that really dives deep into this, shows you all of the different effects that you can uh, add into those steps and uh, just exactly how that whole workflow works. So if you wanna see that in depth and you wanna get a step-by-step -step walkthrough of creating a special effect, just check below this video in the description for a link to that video. But of course, if you don't want to take the time to uh, create your own custom effects, if you click the scenario tab down at the bottom, you do have these presets built into here. So they have things like police lights. Uh, you've got uh, lightning down here. You've got this fluorescent light flashing right there. You've got red eye, uh, red color cycle. You've got full color cycle. You've got the typical party effects, all of that good stuff where you can completely dim them. You can adjust the speed uh, with quite a lot of precision from zero to 100%. So uh, there's lots of control in here, which is always a good thing to see. Finally, we have the DJ mode, but I am just going to show you that it exists. Uh, it's gonna follow the music, basically. I personally don't like these modes. I don't think that they're useful for me, but uh, it is built into there, and there's a bunch of songs that are preset into there, which can be useful if you don't have any music on your phone. So now what I wanna quickly show you is just how you can set up these lights uh, to work together with one of them being basically a master and the other lights following them without even having to use a app. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the RX-7 as our master and you'll see the RX-50 behind it uh, follow along. So let's just jump into the menu and see what you gotta do to set that up. All right, so I kind of lied about not having to use the app for the Mesh Master uh, application. What you wanna do first is go back to that first page and actually create a group or edit one of the groups, for example, group one, and put the lights that you want to be in that mesh group into that group on the app. After that, you can close the app. You don't need to use the app after that. We're gonna to go to the lights and we're gonna choose the group. We're gonna go into the mesh menu and it says mesh group. Choose the group that we put them in, in this case, group one, and do that on both lights. Then go to the light that you want to be the master, in this case, the RX-7, and make sure that you choose it uh, to be the mesh master. 
And now when you go back out into HSI mode, for example, or CCT mode, for example, the other lights in that mesh group will follow along. So I know that wasn't perfect, but hopefully uh, this gave you some idea of how this app works and the different capabilities that are built into it. And especially in the case of the custom FX, I know that it can go very, very deep. Uh, I didn't want to show you absolutely everything here because obviously it's up to you to be creative and to create what you need. But I just wanted to show you the basics of how that works. So hopefully it helped out and uh, hopefully you can have a lot of fun with this because these lights are very powerful, very high quality, and uh, the app just really opens it up even more. There's just a lot that you can do with these lights. So if you have any questions or comments, please do let me know down below. Otherwise, if you like this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't already, and I hope to see you next time.